In this video, we will try to get electric field due to a long charge carrying conductor. So we have a long charge carrying conductor here. So all these are maybe positively charged or negatively charged. But anyway, this is a uniform charge distribution. We have learned this case previously and I, we also have proven that the electric field will be outward, radially outward such a way that they won't cross each other like crystals in brush, toothbrush or yeah it's not uh, in toothbrush in bottle brush this is the direction of electric field so how to apply how to get the value of electric field we can consider a Gaussian surface here simply we can apply Gauss's theorem here how to apply the Gauss's theorem? Step 1. Step 1. So 3 steps. Step 1, step 2 and step 3. Step 3. So first we will consider step 1. We need a Gaussian surface. Okay, so I am going to consider a Gaussian surface in this way. Now, see how many surfaces it, it do have? It has three surfaces. Which are the surfaces? Surface 1, area 1, area 2 and area 3. Okay, so I got a Gaussian surface in this way and that is obeying all the rules. I have explained in the previous video, go and watch that. So anyway, I'll explain here as well. Always area have to be taken outward. Okay, so this is directed out. Here also directed out. Here also directed out. Now here electric field lines and area are parallel to each other. So theta is equal to zero. So this is A2 right, this is A3. Now here electric field line is in this direction, area theta is 90. So with A1 theta is equal to 90. With A2 theta is equal to 90. So it is symmetrical with this surface on top surface and this surface and we know that electric field at all the point on the curved surface is the same. Okay, so we have considered step 1 that is Gaussian surface. Step 2, we will apply. What is step 2? We have to find E dot ds. How many surfaces we have? Surface 1, surface 1, 2 and 3. So that is integral of, so top surface. I will make, make it as, this is not closed surface, right? Integral, so that is phi 1 plus integral phi 2 plus integral phi 3. So total flex linked with the top surface, with bottom surface and with the curved surface. This is top, bottom, this one is very important, okay. This is curved surface. Now top surface we know angle is 90 degree. So phi 1 is nothing but integral E dot ds, that is E ds cos, angle is 90 here, so cos 90. With phi 2 is also it's the same. E at that point into ds into cos 90. The angle is 90 here as well. And with the third surface, curved surface, it is E at this point. E into ds into cos angle is 0. So theta is equal to 0 here. So cos 0. Now with these two surface flex will be 0. Why? Cos 90 and cos 90 are 0. So whatever may be this value but when you are multiplying with 0 then that will become 0. So with top and bottom it is 0. We will have only curved surface. That is integral of E into ds into cos 0. Cos 0 is 1 itself. So step 2 is done here. 1. So it's the same thing. This is the flex. 
Now what is step 3? We have to find the total charged and closed. This is a linear charge distribution. Very important. Linear charge distribution. Which means the total Q is distributed over a length of L. And that this is called as linear charge density lambda. This is Q. It's not phi. It's Q. So as per third step, we have to find the total charge and closed. That is Q here. So as per this equation, this implies that my Q is equal to lambda into L. So all the steps are done. Now we have to just equate step 2 with step 3. So not equate, we have to substitute step 2 in step 3. So this is the value of flux, right? On the RHS, we can apply Gauss's theorem. So as per Gauss's theorem, the total flux is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 times charged and closed. Now I can substitute this charged and closed in this equation. So that is equal to e dot ds. So e dot ds, it's not e dot ds, e into ds. So e dot ds is nothing but es cos theta, but we know that it is cos 0. So 1, so e into ds is equal to what is charge? Lambda into L divided by epsilon 0. Now here you can find, substitute the value. We know that electric field at all the point in the curved surface is the same. So you can take E outside. So this is equal to, so here E I can take outside and integral ds is equal to lambda into L divided by epsilon 0. Now what is the total area of the surface if it is having a distance of a radius of r it's a cylinder right so i can say that the total area is equal to what is the total a circumference this total circumference this one 2 pi r so 2 pi r into h will be the total area see it's a cylinder right it's a cylinder how to get the total curved area so it, with the cylinder see the denominator sorry the bottom side if you are taking then that will be a circle having 2 pi r parameter okay circumference now if you are opening it this side is 2 pi r and this is nothing but height see this was 2 pi r this was 2 pi r and this one is height if you are opening it's it is simply a rectangle Okay, so the total area of the surface is 2 pi r into E into 2 pi r is the parameter and h is the height. H Instead of h, I am going to mention it as L because I already have considered length as L. So it, it is the same height of the cylinder when, we, when you are comparing the total length of the conductor so h and l are same so 2 pi r into l is the area is equal to lambda l divided by epsilon 0 so l and l can be cancelled electric field at the curved surface is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi r into epsilon 0 very important relation see lambda divided by i'll take 2 pi r this side L and L has got cancelled. So lambda divided by 2 pi r into epsilon 0 is the value of electric field. So what is the electric value of electric field here? Electric field is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi r into epsilon 0. Very very important. Okay. Thank you. Shifo? 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 In this video, we will try to get electric field due to an infinitely long charge sheet. So this is a charge sheet and this is the section in this way. So this is the sheet and this is kept in this way. Okay. Now, here we know that it is a conductor so charge will be distributed across the area so here we have already learned sigma is equal to charge distributed per unit area 
so q is equal to sigma in dy so we need the value of q that's the reason i have written it over there so three step step one step two step three with this we will get the value of electric field what is step one we have to consider a gaussian surface that encloses the charge so we need we know that electric field is directed in this way i have explained in the previous video as it will intersect to each other so from here electric field will be in this direction parallel now I can consider an area. Let's say I'm considering an area here in this way. So an area. So let's say this is the area. A small area ds. Ds. I'm all I'm initially going to find out the flex passing through ds. That is small d phi is equal to I know e dot ds. Okay, now this small d phi I'll integrate to get the total flex through the surface, the Gaussian surface I'm going to consider. But here the problem is, see, it looks like it has enclosed the charge in ds, but see, from the other side of the sheet, the flex will be, there will be a flex leakage in this way, right? See, if you are considering an area, a section, a Gaussian surface in this way, basically we are only considering half of the flex. See, remaining half is going through the other side. This we have not considered. With this Gaussian surface, we can't apply Gauss's theorem. Okay, so I am going to consider an area in this way. This is a Gaussian surface here, a cylindrical section. It's three dimension okay a cylindrical section in this way now all the charges from my small area ds will be sending its field line either through this or through this now all the field lines are passing through the area i have considered okay now is step one all the points from step one is satisfied yes see this portion is having an area directed in this way always area will be outward right and field is in this way both are making an angle of zero in between parallel now it, it has got a curved surface and its area is upward or at this surface it will be towards me perpendicular to this and we know that electric fields are going in this way so the angle is 90 degree theta is equal to 90 so it is symmetrical across all the points in the curved surface and also on this surface and also on this surface. So on both the surface it is symmetrical and on the curved surface theta is symmetrical. And also electric field is the same at this surface and at this surface. So that obeys all points from step 1. I got a Gaussian surface. This is my Gaussian surface. Okay, so these are field lines. Step 2, find integral, closed integral d phi. So that is closed integral d phi is the top, phi e is the total flex. And how to get here, how many surface we have? 1, 2 and a curved surface. So this one is 1 top and this is 2 and we have a curved, curved surface 3. So top, bottom, yeah, top or bottom anyway in, in my picture it is top and bottom okay three is curved surface so three surface we have so this this is nothing but integral phi 1 plus integral phi 2 plus integral phi 3 so after adding all this value i'll get the net flux now phi 1 and phi 2 so here both of them are parallel angle is zero so this is equal to e1 into a1 into cos zero plus e2 into a2 into cos zero plus curved surface we know the angle is 90 so that is e3 into a3 into cos 90 this will become zero because cos 90 is zero cos zero and cos zero one so this is 
integral e1 a1 plus integral e2 a2 so here areas are d a1 and d a2 small area this one and this one but we know that electric field at this point and this point is the same because if i am considering a, a portion r distance away from here i am also considering a portion r distance away from here so it is the same electric electric field and even this area is equal to this area why i have considered in that way okay so as i have considered in that way it will be equal so i can take it as 2 into integral e into a the reason is e1 is equal to e2 a1 is equal to a2 da1 da2 because why i am mentioning it as da1 and da2 because i have considered only for a small area here okay so this is nothing but 2 into electric field is the same right it's a constant here da1 da 2 into e i can take outside now integral da so integral da means i have to consider the whole area so this is only integral ds so either you can mention it as ds or da it's the same thing so i have used ds here i should have uh, i should have kept ds across but uh, somewhere i have changed da but it's the same thing no difference you can mention here area as the small area you have considered okay so anyway see this is da but when we are integrating the whole area will come to the picture so that is 2 into e into what is the total area i am just considering it as a so that is the total area this one area that area is nothing but integral da small da if you are considering the total area is a or you can take a as integral ds it's the same thing or you can instead of a you can consider s also but i have considered a here that is the reason i'm considering a here as well okay so i got the value of phi e now step three as per step three i'll keep it here as per step three whatever the value i have got so as per step three i have to get the value of charge i already got the value of charge here charge and closed is equal to the total charge sigma into a now I will su substitute step 2 in step 3. So as per Gaussian, th th Gaussian Gauss's theorem, this value flex, total flex enclosed is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 times charge enclosed. Now this one I have found out that is 2 into E into A. This is equal to what is Q? Sigma into A divided by epsilon 0. Now A, A can be cancelled. So I got the value of electric field is equal to sigma by 2 epsilon 0. This is a very very important relation. See in the previous case we have got an equation and there see equation was lambda divided by 2 pi r into epsilon 0. This was electric field due to a straight wire and here E is dependent on R. Now which means from a current uh, from a charged conductor if you are moving away electric field is decreasing e is inversely proportional to r here okay but here in this case see sigma is constant epsilon 0 is a constant which means electric field at all the point from the sheet will be the same but the consideration is sheet should be infinitely long okay now if I am considering the board as my sheet, if I am keeping my point here, then with respect to this point, it is infinitely long. Here also infinitely long. Here also infinitely long. But when I am keeping it here, the sheet is not infinitely long. So I can't apply the equations here. I can only apply for those points where the sheet seems to be infinitely long. So in that point, electric field doesn't change the value sigma by 2 epsilon 0. Okay. Thank you.